It's mock draft time, and this time we are going head to head to head. See how we have to adapt our draft strategies. See which players were taken in those middle rounds. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like this episode. Make sure you enjoy the show. Hey, it's me, the guy who introduces the show. Listen to my amazing voice. Now, check out the amazing Ultimate Draft Kit. The guys spend all off-season creating this bad boy, and they keep it updated all off-season. It's got their full projections, breakouts, sleepers, busts, over 100 player profile videos. It's even got a mobile app. Has my incredible voice lulled you into a deep sense of trust and commitment? Perfect. Now check out ultimatedraftkit.com and get ready to win your league. Now, back to the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh. Oh. Hey. I forgot already. You forgot it was football time? I was driving in. I was driving in and I heard it on the radio. I was like, oh, it's a football time day. And then I got in and as soon as I walked through the door, poof, vanished. I forgot. And then the words came out of your mouth, Mike. And I am hyped. It's football time. It's Football time. <laughs> Cowboys Steelers tonight, right? Or I mean some of their backups. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I know. It's spectacular. It's good news. We might I see mean, Najee today. Okay. I hope okay. not. I, yeah, if I've, he wants to play in all the preseason games. Yeah. No. No. Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh? No. He's a strong boy. Yeah, he could take it. No. I say Pittsburgh. He's a strong no, young Pittsburgh. man. Pittsburgh. No. Yes. Give oh. me, give me the sight yeah. of Najee. That would be fun. I mean, if you could see, you know, a couple, couple snaps, Mike. I'd like to see him in that super awesome warm up technique. You know, what does he go through when he's getting ready for a game, and then what does he look like when he's standing on the sideline with let, his let, helmet off? Let me ask you this, Mike. So the, they call if, that the James Conner. If you knew. Without a shred of doubt, you have 100% certainty that he could play, can't get injured, won't affect the season. Would you want him? Would you want to see him out there? <laughs> no, just ask. It's hypothetical. But would you prefer to see him and watch him play? Now, Mike, if you could answer give, the question, you could give one of your uh, favorite running backs right now superpowers. Would you like to see that happen? I am fairly sure that the only reason Mike doesn't want him out there tonight is because he doesn't want him to get hurt. That's but my, so yes, Mike would not like keep him off the field. I'm just trying to get to the truth, which is Mike. You want to see it? You want to see what's going to happen tonight? And uh, actually, no, because right now the the way I the way I project the way I believe in Najee Harris, he's still a value in drafts. Oh, so you don't want to see that breakaway run, and then all yes. of a sudden. I don't want to see him truck stick a, another human into oblivion. Trying to lay and, low. And jump up into the top of the second round. That's fair. That's that's just this good for the strategy. People. This is yeah. for the people. Not for me. <laughs> okay. I have nothing to do with it. That is, all right. August 5th, mock draft show. Pittsburgh. Some news to talk about. Uh, our quick question of the day. Do you avoid drafting too many players with the same bye week? Or does that not matter to you? This is a... This is one of the August questions we get. One of the staples. One of the staples, but it's a good one. I mean, people want to know. 17 uh, weeks this year, do you avoid drafting players with the same bye week? I, when I'm in a normal draft, a keeper draft, a redraft, I, have, I don't even remember the last time I've looked at a bye week. I, it, it, it doesn't factor in as a tiebreaker. Um, it is irrelevant. It is meaningless and does not – like, I want the better players. I, I, I look at a lot of different things. Bye weeks is not – they all have one, um, and you can make arguments for when that's convenient or inconvenient. Now, that changes in best ball. In a best ball league, when I am, you know, drafting two or three quarterbacks or two or three tight ends, ah, you, you might want to make sure they don't have the same bye week um, if you got two quarterbacks and then you skip a week of points. 
Now, I th- go ahead, Mike. It's a, it looks like Week Seven will be this year's bipocalypse. You mm. have the Bills, Cowboys, Jaguars, Vikings, Steelers, and Chargers all on by that week. Yeah, I mean, but and, my, look- and my team will be completely different than the one I drafted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that, that's what we were going to point out. You make moves through the through the season, and and being worried about Week Seven. Nah, man, don't. <laughs> Don't don't sweat week seven when it's not even week one yet. I think that that by people used to really pay attention to this, but it was for a few reasons at the kind of inception of fantasy football. One was rosters were much smaller and your starting lineup was much smaller, so it really made an impact if you had matching. And two, there weren't a lot of transactions back then. And you know, that's the headline is you make so many trades, you make so many waiver pickups, um, you know, last thing you want to do is like plan your draft by bye week and then feel like you're obligated to keep that team intact to play that out or something. And a, just a real good quick piggyback on that on that comment there. If you're new to fantasy football or you're new to being a, a league commish, no transaction limits, people. Yeah, it's a do good. Do not yeah. put a limit on transactions. It eliminates strategy. It eliminates fun, and it's dumb. I was going to ask you, what if I don't want to have quite as much fun this year? Oh, then, then transaction yeah, limits yeah, put it are on there. a great approach. <laughs> put yeah. it at five. Who cares? Right. you Because you don't care about fantasy football. You don't care about having fun. I actually do like transaction limits when it's complete. Give me a best ball league. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a, it's a league I want to manage. Like the, There's two options it's here. True. Best what ball if you turn is, off managing your team? Best <laughs> right. ball is the <laughs> ultimate transaction. No transaction limit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate you listening, subscribing, following the show. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, You can find us on Twitter at The FF Ballers. There is news to talk about. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. All right. We haven't talked about this specific rumor, even though. It was percolating a couple of weeks ago, and again yesterday, um, CBS Sports NFL analyst verified on Twitter, Chris uh, Trapasso. Apologies if I mispronounce your name. He tweeted the Eagles and talks. Uh, the Eagles and Texans are in talks regarding a possible Deshaun Watson trade. There were some discussions, talks, speculation weeks ago about basically Broncos, Eagles. Dolphins being the teams that could be interested in Deshaun Watson. Other sources have said the talks are not heating up. Say pro football talk, they don't care if you did mispronounce right. that reporter's name because they came out and they said, no, this is not happening. But, you know, smoke, fire, take it for what you will. We should discuss it because it has pretty vast implications for especially dynasty players. But also, like, I mean, if you're drafting – Next week or two weeks from now, and Deshaun Watson, the cloud that is Deshaun Watson, is over your head as you approach Jalen Hurts in your draft. I, I was in a draft last night, uh, two quarterback, and I was staring down Jalen Hurts, and this was enough smoke to make me mm. go a different way. I did not draft him because uh, it, it's a best ball league, and I, I, don't, I don't have the ability to make those transactions, so I didn't want to all of a sudden not have a quarterback when Deshaun Watson comes to town, if Deshaun Watson comes to town. At some point in time, you know, the the tweet talked about there being hurdles to overcome in a trade. At some point in time, there will be minimal enough hurdles with Deshaun Watson where a trade or him playing will happen. Like, that's inevitable. So... Long-term, yes. Yes, long-term. Long-term, and the... Deshaun Watson is extremely difficult uh, with the the 22 accusations still there. The trade rumors abound. Uh, the the way that the Houston Texans are dealing with Deshaun Watson. My my thoughts, which I have no, you know, this is just my thoughts of uh, being inside the NFL for years and years. I'm not an insider. Definitely an I'm an outsider. NFL oh, yeah. outsider. Mike Wright reporting. I believe Deshaun Watson will be put on the commissioner's exempt list. He will continue to be paid as they figure out what's going on with the off the field stuff. He will not play this year while it gets figured out. That's just that's so that's my opinion. And that's how I'm treating Deshaun Watson that I'm not drafting him anywhere. Well let me give you 
a more challenging follow-up question. Okay. Not drafting him anywhere, I believe what you your sentiment is probably redraft leagues. Yes. But what if you're doing a dynasty startup draft right now? There's all the ambiguity. But Deshaun Watson, you know what he is on the field. You know what he is as a fantasy player. Are you drafting him in a dynasty startup draft? Either of you can. He he is certainly a draftable asset. I mean, you 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 know, uh, with all the news, you got to make the decision on whether you want him on your team. When he got drafted in last night's draft, it was like someone apologized and said, "I don't think there's a way to take this without indicting yourself." Um, but he's 25 years old. He's an excellent football player. He will play in the future. So he's someone that's going to be drafted, and you've just got to take your risk assessment, build your team. I would agree with Mike that my assumption would be. He won't play this season. He will play next year. All right, let's move on. Uh, Mike Vrabel said the Julio watch will continue <laughs> after Julio Jones missed his second straight practice on Wednesday. He left Monday after landing awkwardly. Uh, it's a bit ironic considering A.J. Green was brought <laughs> up a couple of days ago, and A.J. Green and Julio, same draft class, same age, the Both big, with camp injuries now. The big difference to me, though, and, and this is a pretty giant difference, is that we've seen this from Julio <laughs> every week of every season for four. He he falls, he gets hurt, he comes out, he doesn't practice, and then he plays and is awesome every week. So uh, it, it's that history that makes me not really concerned about this. I don't know if that's foolish because of the age, but he's pretty much been injured at all times the last two or three years and played through it for the most part. Not last year. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the risk proposition with Julio is compounded by the transition to a new team. Getting acclimated, what will A.J. Brown take away from him? Obviously the best talent that he's probably played with. I know Calvin Ridley was there, but as an established kind of one, he, you know, Ridley wasn't that guy. So uh, You're not that guy, pal. Yeah, <laughs> you're not that guy. Uh, you, so you need to you need to pay attention, and you know there are a lot of little tweaks and in injuries in camp. Um, Tyreek Hill was in pads today. Yeah, it's great news. Uh, so he's back out there at the start of Chiefs practice. No tendonitis. It's gone. Um, <laughs> still has his tendons. Right. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Galladay will miss two to three weeks of training camp. The Giants being cautious, so the camp strings. Uh, not going to try them out before the season begins, probably. Here's, yeah, here's how I feel. You, you missed two to three weeks. Okay, that's – look, preseason is kind of starting tonight. Two to three weeks means you're not going to have great information when your draft is happening in late August. He is down my board uh, for fear of re-aggravating the hamstring personally. Yeah, I have been the – kind of the, the biggest – advocate for Kenny Galladay believing that you know that the uh -oh. oh Kenny G <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kenny G you don't sound so good I, I I'm especially happy because Mike didn't quite know that drop no, was I, gonna I, hit I, I totally forgot <laughs> what the hell was but the the saxophone oh. uh look when the saxophone was shipped over to New York mm. got some dings got some dents and it's not, well, and it's a it's pattern. It's a magical. pattern. Yeah, it, it is a bit of a pattern. Now, I do not like drafting players with hamstring injuries in camp. Especially, like, okay, you tweak it, you're out for whatever a couple of days. You come back, but two to three weeks, I I, I can no longer Kenny Galladay in good conscience <laughs> continue <laughs> to to push that that you need to draft Kenny Galladay. Uh, but no, no, it's not smooth. Play it, Kenny. Let's play through it. It's not smooth. It's so rough. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And also, this AJ Green guy has a minor issue in camp. All right. Uh, I said, Gada is not off my board, but you gotta like. I think his ADP was you know in the fifth round or late fourth. Not anymore. Yeah, it's funny. You do not. You're not obligated to provide an injury report in camp as a head coach. So some of the coaches out there have been leaning into that and kind of, you know, I think Cliff Kingsbury came out and said, I'm just going to enjoy the fact I'm not obligated to do this for the next three weeks mm. before the season begins. So uh, it doesn't help fantasy players out. But that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Make sure you switch to the fastest growing fantasy football platform. Stay connected with your friends all year 
on the Sleeper platform. Great place to uh, start a new league. So check that out. By the way, Ooh. Brooksy did put a poll up yesterday. What was the result of that poll, Mr. Giamatti? Mr. Brooks. Mr. Giamatti. <laughs> Well, the the poll was if you were doing one team, if you guys are drafting one team today or three separate teams, and it's definitely three separate teams. It was a whooping. It was like eighty five percent, and we are men of the people. Yeah, and and so one team. What? Well, no. <laughs> so we they went head to head to head, and that's what we're doing today. I'm I'm drafting from the first spot, Mike from the sixth, Jason from the twelfth. I will just say this: like I kind of assumed that would win. Like I almost regretted throwing the poll up. Because that will always win. People want to see us battle each other. Right. I mean, it's just in our blood. They want that internal hatred. It's like Jason's question for me of like, do I want to see my running back with superpowers? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, but one of the reasons why, just putting it out there, one of the reasons why we draft as one team sometimes is so that we have more time on the show mm -hmm. to break down the pick, to discuss strategies. And don't worry, we will argue and fight in that situation as well. We have two more mock drafts scheduled before the kickoff of the season, so I'm sure we'll do a, a solo team yeah. uh, at some point. All right, let's get it going. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Al Borland is here too today. Oh! So uh, we, we have both producers. Probably need a few more to really keep things... <laughs> under under control. <laughs> hoot hoot. Uh, all right. So as I mentioned, I am drafting from the first spot. I don't think I've ever done a mock draft on this show where I have the first pick. I wonder Possible, where he's going to go. But this is where we need to bring up the question. In the office, you said, you, you mentioned to us, are we not talking enough about Christian McCaffrey? Uh, do we have any concerns about the the target share? I mean, we you saw just, I think it was three games last year with with the new system, with the new head coach, Matt Jaw Rule, and now you have Sam Darnold in the equation. Do you have any concerns about McCaffrey? Should we be discussing that at all as him as the consensus number one pick? So who? where did you go, Andy? Yeah, I went with Christian McCaffrey okay. with the first pick. <laughs> you answered your question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that there are variables that existed last year. I guess three games, you know, is enough to answer the fact that, you know, he was the most dominant number one pick the year before three opportunities last year, zero doubts in those games dominated in those three games. Um, you do have another new quarterback, but I think, I think you guys were right. We were talking in the studio, you know, like we saw enough of the system. I think that's the word that you used. that, you know, whether it's Darnold or Bridgewater, you know, this was not a great team last year. He still was great in the three games. Also, injury-wise, yeah, yeah in injury-wise, it's it's worth noting that you know he was kind of shut down because they didn't need him for anything. He he was um, not catastrophically injured at the end of the year and having to recover. He talked about his off season that he's he feels great. He's had so much time to prepare. He's excited to get back out there. All right, so I did go Christian McCaffrey. This is a 12-team mock draft, half PPR, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, one defense, and five bench uh, on the sleeper platform. You can watch and follow along if you're watching on YouTube. We have the draft board up there. Uh, Mike is drafting from the sixth position. Jason is at the turn. He's at one twelve, or he's at the 12th pick. So, Mike, you are on the clock. The first five picks were McCaffrey, Henry, Cook, Jonathan Taylor, Alvin Kamara. All right. Uh, it's, since we, you know, have gone to the daily shows here in August, I went. It, it, all three of us have been, you know, jumping back in the projections, making sure the uh, our opinions haven't changed, or if they have, make the the appropriate corrections. And especially after, I think it was just yesterday, we were talking about, you know, Aaron Jones and. Nicholas I, Chubb, and, and we talked Nick, about him. And Nick Chubb. I'm very high on Nick Chubb. And I've just gotten to the point of if I'm in, when I'm in a draft, I'm not taking Nick Chubb over Aaron Jones. Even though like my projection had that, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't make that pick. I, I would go with Aaron Jones. You were being you, you had a moment to yourself. Yes. You meditated a little bit. So I had to reflect. Although I, I have Zeke slightly ahead of Aaron Jones. So 
between those two players, I think it is a it is a difficult choice, but uh, I'm going to go with Zeke on this one. So at the sixth spot, Ezekiel Elliott, running back from the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> well, after Zeke went Tyreek and then Saquon and then Chubb and then Hopkins, and then oh. there was just – there was just one more pick there. Oh man! Before Mr. Moore's on the clock, I was and up, I was upset when Mike was talking about Aaron Jones versus Chubb because I thought at the twelve, the player I wanted the most was Aaron Jones. I thought he could get there. Very happy you didn't take him, and he dropped all the yeah. way to one spot yeah. before me. Who took Aaron Jones? Stupid team, team eleven. 11. <laughs> team eleven. They are the worst. Team eleven took Aaron Jones. I'm sorry, Jason. You are on the clock. You get two picks. I How, get is two that picks, and price? at the end of the first, uh, you you haven't been seeing Travis Kelsey hit here very often. Uh, I'm going to grab him there. I you know I would grab him earlier in the first, and then I'm going to take my number seven running back overall, who I think is set up for massive success, um, and that's Austin Eckler with the improved offensive line, the pass catching work, uh, the the offense, the quarterback. I mean, there, there's really. No reason to doubt Austin Eckler this year, and I want a running back if I'm taking a tight end early. All right, so Kelsey and Eckler for Jason's squad. Mike is back on the clock with Zeke already on his roster. Mike, why don't you take a moment to yourself to consider this next pick while Ooh. we thank today's sponsors. Namaste. <laughs> and we want to thank Keeps for keeps in our hair around. You gotta Look, keeps your hair. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35 on our show. It is uh, one out of three men. It's me. And there are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both of them. They offer a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair, convenient virtual doctor consultations, medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't got to leave your home, and it's a low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month. They offer the generic versions, discreet packaging. You don't have to be ashamed, and they've got more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Look, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash footballers. Treatments could take four to six months to see results, so act fast. I feel like Mike and I tempt fate with that read every single time. Well, because, oh yeah, yeah it's coming it's yeah, coming like i mean at some point in time yeah all right well look let's thank Indochino. probably not though yeah probably not we're fine uh indochino we've talked about them recently and look you, it fits together with uh keeping your look nice and tight get that hair feeling right and then make that sure you sharp make sure you look sharp and there are Look, there were a lot of things put on hold over the last year maybe they they've been planned there's weddings i mean we were on vacation we must have saw like five weddings on the beach uh, just in the time that we were there. People getting married all over the place. Were they in a suit? Yeah, well, they were, but some, I mean, some of them didn't look so good. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, but Indochino will fix that for you, and uh, creating your best look is more affordable than you think. You've listened to Mike and Jason talk about them in recent days. They make this Love my so easy. Uh, if you visit the showroom, you get a ta you can get a tailored suit at an affordable price and, and guess what? It looks like the suit was made for you because it was made for you. That's kind of the point, right? You checks out. You don't. Uh, I, I complain about having shirts that are the wrong length all the time here because uh, everybody's different, and you want a suit that looks great on you. They also have like custom fit shirts, uh, casual wear, affordable prices, and uh, they're now open at select Nordstrom stores. So uh, that gives you more ways to get a great fitting and personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com. And right now you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at indochino.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. All right, I'm on the clock here. Uh, Any more soul searching? Yeah, so did we? Jason went, Austin Eckler, that was followed up by Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon. So I am on the clock. Uh, if I went wide receiver here, it would be a smash pick. It would be Calvin Ridley. He is my number four overall wide receiver. 
I think has a tremendous chance to be the overall number one wide receiver by the end of the year. <sighs> Running backs are drying up here. And right at, at the top of the list for me would be Antonio Gibson and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I like both of these players. Clyde's ADP has a chance to slip. We've talked about Clyde is kind of that running back that sometimes slips into a place in the third where I do end up going RB, 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 just I mean, very high T, very robust running back, which – it doesn't usually end up that way. How many shots of espresso in that in that roster? Oh, I mean, you know, two forty ounce uh, <laughs> lattes. I mean, that that Dan Campbell stuff. Holy crap! That is that the key to the kind of like muscular formation. Uh, yeah, that's that the that's the key to your heart giving probably, probably out some as other, a forty five year old. Probably some other shots involved, not just espresso. <laughs> yeah, you need some downers for <laughs> sure to keep that man alive. Uh, I'm going to take I'm going to take my champion. I'm going to take Antonio Gibson and see what happens with the ADP on the way back. Starting with Zeke and Gibson is really nice. I, I expect great seasons for both players, and, and you you have what I project to be two top ten running backs to start the season. All right, uh, Zeke and Gibson for Mike, Kelsey and Eckler for Jason, and I am back on the clock here. Christian McCaffrey was my first pick, and um, I'm, I'm extremely happy with where I'm positioned uh george kittle is going to be on my roster here okay um i think that just the value on the difference making ability there and i was really hoping that either ridley or justin jefferson made it back to me so i will end up with running back wide receiver and tight end in my first three picks justin jefferson off the board to me with the third round pick spreading the love around now yeah. why, why kittle over waller uh, I just believe that the kind of explosiveness of of Kittle on a week to week basis is going to be more valuable to my team than the especially when Trey Lance is throwing the ball. Yeah, I mean potentially. So week one, got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. The, if, oh man, did you know he just he he was um, he introduced Trey Lance? into the Hall of Fame the, uh, earlier this him week. and Kyle Pitts. Yeah, Kyle Pitts and Trey Lance were both I love uh, it. into the hype Hall of Fame. Hype Hall of Fame. Uh, so no, McCaffrey, Kittle, Jefferson. Uh, if if there had been a Joe Mixon sitting there at the end of the second round, I would have glanced his direction. But but there wasn't. Was there any thought to Clyde Edwards-Alaire there? Uh, just a little bit of thought. Okay. But the the power of McCaffrey at the top really gave me the flexibility, and that's what's nice about the first pick this year is is you get some flexibility. Uh, we'll see what diamond I can find for that second running back spot. But, Mike, you're back on the clock. Uh, after your Gibson pick was Brown, Mahomes, Ridley, Allen, then I went Kittle, Jefferson, and then Clyde did go, Montgomery, Dobbins, and Swift. So, Mike, you are back on the clock. All and, running back since my pick. Yes, and, and that's all right. It was there was, a, there was two players. I was really looking at the playing the ADP game, seeing if one of them fell to me. One was Clyde, and uh, – I probably would have selected him there, but I have a quick note um, for so David Montgomery went at the the three oh three, and he's been a very polarizing player this entire off season, and you know talking about how he the second half yes he was a league winner but he beat up on bad defenses, and I was trying to think through you know the the Montgomery season of last year, and something I that's. I'm not hearing the chatter because it's the more the focus is more on the second half and how he wasn't great in the first half was still getting the volume because Tariq was out. You guys remember when we thought Montgomery went down to a season-ending injury in oh, training I camp? Forgot about that. As did I. Like the guy went down in a heap. We thought he tore his groin off of the bone. Yeah, ouch! And he, he ended up that he was just out a few weeks. He was able to come That's back. That's a good point. But I totally forgot about that. Could have had an impact on the beginning of the year. You would think it would. Yeah, you, you know so, what I, I say it a million times. You need your groin. You you need both of them. <laughs> Groinindex.com. Groin inde <laughs> Don't forget about groinindex.com. Yeah, Don't valuable forget. resource. So anyways. Uh, free resource. <laughs> we did not charge. It's very free. We did not charge for that. Um, I moved David Montgomery up a couple spots after I uh, did look his way I had with that, my third round pick. That recollection, but it was, it was just an interesting like that has gotten lost. That w we thought Montgomery was going to be out. David Montgomery has a little bit of the problem that Aaron Jones has in ADP and in drafts, 
where remember yesterday I was saying like it makes no sense that Aaron Jones would be drafted yeah. automatically drafted behind Zeke and Barkley. Mm -hmm. Like Montgomery is automatically drafted behind I don't know Najee or Gibson. Like this was a player that went on a run that was the best running back in football for half a season, sure. and everybody wants to excuse it away. Maybe the truth of David Montgomery is somewhere between the first and second half, and it's a really good player. Yes, could be. But so after that little tangent there, the other player that if he falls in the third round, Darren Waller, that is an auto pick for me. I want a top three running back or a tight end. I want a superstar at that position so I don't have to worry about this it. This is really interesting, right? Because we're at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the draft, and all three of us independently uh, yes, showed our cards, and we spent one of those early picks on a tight end. I think that is something that uh, we have really endorsed this season, getting that position out of the way, having the positional advantage over... Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a real you know game plan changer uh through Real the season whiz popper. you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to play the streaming I I like options you don't have to uh be cutting people and looking uh you know to oh man who's playing against the cardinals this week well we haven't really been in this boat before like in previous off seasons and i think it's because of how secure these three feel compared to like the speculative top players every year right i mean kelsey's been there for a while um but Mike, what I was surprised at, and I don't know if your drafting of Gibson is an influence of this, but I did want to bring it up. Like Terry McLaurin was there in the third round. Yeah. And I thought it might be a hard decision for you between McLaurin and Waller. A lot of players out there, fantasy players, might be in this position where like Gibson McLaurin could be the second and third round picks. Are you? Did you have any thought of that, or was Waller just too much to pass up on? I had no thought for Terry McLaurin, but let's say that – Waller had gone at the uh, right before me instead of DeAndre Swift. I would have been looking at Terry McLaurin, and it the fact that I have Gibson does impact that. It's not it's not my favorite to go with uh, those two players. I it can it can work. I mean, Washington doesn't project to be a powerhouse offense. I think they're going to be fine, and uh, we've seen bad teams. A great running back and a great wide receiver coexist. You had a uh, couple years, or I mean, uh, a couple years back, Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore. Like it, Moore wasn't a superstar, but Moore was a very he was a weekly player for your fantasy lineup. So it, with Washington, though, that's it's not my favorite combination. Yeah, we, we yeah when we talk about it, you want a great offense to support that running back wide receiver combo. And while Washington, I think both those guys will be good. They're not a great offense, right. you know. They're not the Packers or the uh, the Chiefs. So here I am on the clock. I've got uh, Travis Kelsey. I've got Austin Eckler, Carson well, McLaurin, Thomas Evans, and Jacobs before your pick here. Right, and so now I'm because I'm at the 12 spot, which I personally hate being at the very end of a draft. Um, and the reason I don't like it is because of the, what's happening in running backs this season. They're going higher than usual in those first two rounds. Had uh, uh, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, uh, David Montgomery, even a J.K. Dobbins drop to me here, I'd be willing to take it. But I'm going to pivot and go to a modified zero RB because here's what happens game theory-wise. Mike, you've got Ezekiel Elliott, Antonio Gibson. Yeah, if feeling I, great. Oh, that's awesome. If I went Austin Eckler and took the next best running back on the board, right now ADP-wise, it's Miles Sanders. My running backs are worse than your running backs, period. They just are. And now I'm pushing my next wide receiver down to the same round you are. So instead of just drafting and being behind other people in the league, I'm going to load up on wide receiver here, and I'm going to have to play the game of finding my second running back late which isn't what I usually do. So I'm going to grab a uh, locked and loaded wide receiver one uh, for security in Allen Robinson. He's been a top 12 wide receiver in back-to-back -back seasons. I know where you're going with this next pick. And because I've got a locked and loaded yeah, safe guy I in, like it. in my first pick, I'm going to go with CeeDee Lamb for my second. Shoot for the stars um, and hope he breaks out in a massive way. If we were closer to draft season and, and Amari Cooper was, were back on the field fully healthy, I probably would have gotten Cooper there. But uh, Allen Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, Austin Eckler, Travis Kelsey, that's my team right now. Well, Julio went next, and then the f uh, second quarterback off the board, uh, Mahomes went with the ninth pick of the second round. 
Allen goes with the third pick of the fourth round. Is that where you two thought I was going with that second wide receiver? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I figured CeeDee Lamb was not uh, going to make it past you. Uh, even with the Dak concerns, we're not that concerned right now. We're not Dak concerned. Oh. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Oh. <laughs> Miles Sanders and then uh, Daryl Henderson, who I did move up in my rankings recently. Uh, and Chris Godwin next. Mike, you're back on the clock. You have no wide receivers yet. You have Zeke, Gibson, and Waller, though. And uh, are you looking wide receiver here? I am looking at the wide receiver position. Uh, Amari Cooper is atop of the ADP. He's uh, difficult with his – I mean, they say he's close to 100%, but you when you combine what's going on with him and Dak, it it's it's a tough selection for me to go with Amari Cooper right here. And then the other two guys I'll be looking at, DJ Moore from Carolina and Tyler Lockett uh, from the Seattle Seahawks. Although I can in, – in the middle of the draft, I can play the ADP game. I feel Are you like excited knowing, about Tyler Lockett? Your, yes. Your wide receiver won, though, uh, with the things we discussed yesterday. I am because I can find a more consistent type of a player, wide receiver, the, uh, uh, a little bit later on. But when you're talking ceiling – Tyler Lockett's ceiling is massive. Although knowing my competition, at least I mean I don't know the robots personally, but I know Andy. You know Team Eleven. Oh, I they know. Egged, yes, they egged your house. Yes, last night. I know Team Eleven. <laughs> uh, but so Tyler Lockett is probably on Andy's watch list at this point. Uh, but I'm going to take the player that I projected higher uh, at this point. I'm going to take DJ Moore and hope that the touchdowns actually show up this season because if they do dj moore is the top 10 guy okay after dj moore your first wide receiver lamar went next then kenny galladay robert woods travis etn so i'm back on the clock with mccaffrey kittle and jefferson um and i i'm 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 facing some dilemmas here you know when you are drafting either where jason is or myself you know you have a long long wait and so some of the things you can look at here, Amari Cooper, right? He is sitting there, part of that prolific offense. Uh, love Deontay Johnson. You mentioned Tyler Lockett. Those are kind of the three players at the wide receiver position I'm looking at. At running back, Miles Gaskin is there. Man, Miles Gaskin is, what do you do? What do you do with Miles Gaskin? I'm going to show you. You I'm going to show it? you. No, I'm not. Okay. I'm actually going to go a different direction here. A player I have not taken in a mock draft, but a player that I think deserves more attention than I've been willing to give. And uh, a player that was just outside the top 24 last year, but had some prolific weeks that a lot of people were excited about. It's the first time I'm going to take him. Uh, I'm actually going to go Cardinal Cardinal here. Say, so are you taking Chase? I'm going to take the combination of uh, my number two quarterback, your guys is number one quarterback. Okay. I'm going to try on for size Kyler Murray, and I'm going to take Chase it's, Edmonds here. You'll fit into Kyler Murray. Yeah, the the suit is tailored yes. for all. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be like I don't fit because like, it's so small? I guess, yeah. That's where like the, the joke the, like was. Like the jersey. Yeah, the yeah. joke was like my belly's hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys whiffed. Um, so this you is win not, some, you lose some. Uh, look, the reason I wanted to take Chase here is in part because I wanted to talk about Chase Edmonds. Oh, man. Um, Chase Edmonds, like, we, we, we hype up. Like, Jason spent a long time yesterday discussing the value of Travis Etienne and the potential of Travis Etienne. A pass-catching extraordinaire. Eckler is in that same category, that type of running back. Chase Edmonds has that potential on this team. Last year, Chase Edmonds had a, a, a pretty big impact in some big weeks when they had a huge financial commitment to Kenyon Drake. While James Conner will be part of this committee, the financial commitment to James Conner and his recent history lowers the kind of forced workload that Kenyon Drake would have had. So Chase Edmonds has the potential to be a – like I get the stack here. Like Kyler's my quarterback. He Like Chase Edmonds' value is found in the passing game. And so I like that combination here with with stalwarts like McCaffrey, Kittle, and Jefferson. I know I can find value at wide receiver later. So I'm a, I was trying that on for size here in the fourth and fifth. I do like Chase more than Miles Sanders in the sense that they're both passing guys primarily or 
Uh, that's where they excel the most on the field, and you want the better offense. You, you know, and maybe maybe Tua takes that step forward, and the Dolphins are great. But we know that the Cardinals' offense, the pace Did you of say play. Miles Gaskin or Miles Sanders? Gaskin. Okay. Is who I think I said. In I don't know. I, you I said just, Sanders. I, okay. I was confused for Thank a second you, as well. Thank uh, you, Mike. Because I was going to bring up the point of Miles Sanders already struggling with drops yet again in camp. You are pro you probably have alerts on your phone for any negative news about Miles Sanders. Like I don't have alerts. It just it, it's popping up so much. It's <laughs> everywhere. Can't stop it. Have you seen the billboard? <laughs> I bought it. Um <laughs> Mark Andrews went next, Gaskin, Hunt, and Cooper. So, Mike, you were you hoping Cooper would get back to you there? Uh, yeah, Amari Cooper was in play. Miles Gaskin was going to be in play for me there. In the, in the middle of the fifth round, I know I only have one wide receiver, but taking that shot, if Miles Gaskin receives the volume that he got last year, that, I mean, that's stealing a, a running back in the fifth round. Uh, but... The, the decision's easy for me because the, the other wide receiver I was looking at, Tyler Lockett, did fall to me. I have him as a top 15 wide receiver. So the combo of DJ Moore and Lockett in my projections, two top 15 guys to go with Waller, Gibson, and Zeke. Very happy with this start. Kind of worked out for you. Yeah. Waiting on Lockett there. Pitts goes next. Then uh, Dak and Hawkinson. Thielen, Cup, and Mr. Moore back on the clock. Lockett. Looking running back? Uh, I, I so I I am going. I'm certainly at this point in the draft. I am looking at what running backs are available to see if they are of the tier worthy of the same you know options at wide receiver. And I don't think they are. So right now, if I'm looking at running back, there's Mike Davis, Javante Williams, Raheem Mostert, all guys with gigantic question marks. Of are they the guy? Right. Because they very well might not be the guy. Whereas at wide receiver. Deontay Johnson, you know, is going to get near 150 targets. Brandon Ayuk has been balling out in camp, is that second-year wide receiver breakout potential guy. Um, there are wide receivers that I just think are a higher caliber. And while my team might say, but, but Jason, you need a running back. Oh, your team uh, sounds so my, familiar. My team is just of the people, you know, the public opinion. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe that my team is better served by grabbing a worse running back than a better wide receiver. This is one of those situations where I might enter the year a little weak at running back, um, but I'm going to be scouring the waiver wire. I'm going to be looking for the breakouts. Those happen every single yeah, year. You'll, you'll be fine. And I'm going to be solid with Travis Kelsey and mm -hmm. a great group of wide receivers. So I am going to go back-to-back -back wide receivers here. First, I'm going to take Brandon Ayuk who is my, we've talked about it, he's my number two behind CeeDee Lamb, second-year wide receiver breakout. I got both of them, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, and a guy that I haven't drafted anywhere this year, but I do think he is as solid, as safe as it comes, especially in PPR formats. Deontay Johnson um, will be on my roster. So now I've got Allen Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Deontay Johnson. I think my wide receiver core is safe with extreme explosive potential if some of those young guys hit and now you will not be able to play them all every week I will be able to play the matchups I will be able to play the breakout potential uh, but you're right I am I am always fine building my bench before forcing starting positions in because you will need that depth and I would rather have a great player on my bench than a bad starter all right fifth round after your pick, uh, Jamar Chase at the second pick of the sixth round, and T. Higgins ends up going with the fifth pick of the sixth round. So very close. Mike Davis, Justin Herbert in between them, and Beckham, Mike, uh, stealing your potential to take Beckham there. I know you were just dying for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Odell. You, you're back on the clock. Uh, very balanced squad. Zeke, Gibson, Waller, Moore, Lockett. What are you doing here? Where, where's your head? Where's your head, Mike? Where's that giant noggin of yours? Well, giant head, giant brain, doing a lot of okay. giant thinking over here. Yeah, huge head. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I am balanced. Uh, I'm, I'll just take a little quick peek at the quarterbacks: Russell Wilson, Rodgers, Brady, Hurts, Tannehill. I don't feel, based on my tears, I don't feel forced into going into this early on a quarterback right now. So the two players I am looking at. Uh, that I know I have to take one of them. Uh, I won't get one of them, I should say. The wide receiver position, Jason likes Deontay Johnson. Everyone kind of has their favorite 
Pittsburgh Steeler wide receiver. My personal favorite is the second-year breakout of Chase Claypool. I have him ranked as a top-20 wide receiver, so that is very appealing to me to have DJ Moore, Tyler Lock, and Chase Claypool. That's I get that that is high variance, and it could end up hurting me on some weeks, but the upside with those three wide receivers on a weekly on a week to week basis is the ceiling is extremely high or the running back that I would be looking at at this point. You have you know, Ronald Jones is there, Damian Harris guys I, that I do like, but Javante Williams is here, the rookie running back from the Denver Broncos. And I, he probably won't make it back. He probably won't be serviceable at, at least at the beginning of the season. I believe by the second half that he will be a player that you really wish you have on your roster, Jason, the way that you feel about Travis Etienne, mm -hmm. which is, is Travis Etienne went in, in the back of the fourth round. So this is a discount here. And I think that Javante head to head against Travis Etienne by in the second half, I think it's going to be very close. Well, and your roster affords you the opportunity. I, right. I told you yesterday, I was hoping to have the six when we picked the middle because of exactly what has happened. I said, when you're in that middle of uh, the middle of the draft this year, Darren Waller in the third after two great running backs, and now if you've got Zeke and you've got Gibson, you're allowed to let Javante Williams sit on your bench and just get great. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I love it. All right, I am back on the clock. Mike took Javante Williams, and I am going to, because we're for the people, I'm going to explain some regrets that I have. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Uh, let's let's get real. Well, I look. I I took <laughs> five picks in. I mean, you, you, that's how the draft works. I mean, you end up not knowing what the other teams are going to do. I just wanted to point out something from the point in which I took Kyler Murray with the the fourth round pick. Eleven wide receivers went off the board before I had the opportunity to pick again. So I was gambling a little bit with the fact that you know, gotcha, Cooper, Lockett. Thielen, Cup, Ayuk, Deontay, Chase. Um, I mean, those were all guys that probably weren't going to make it back to me, but there was a chance maybe one of them did. And then another four went off the board on top of that. So looking backwards at the draft, which, look, you can't correct those picks in your draft. That's why we do mocks. This is the whole point. So I do regret taking Kyler there where I could have taken, you know, Amari Cooper, where I could have taken Tyler Lockett uh, and kept him away from Mike. So and, and and to point out the reason why I think that's especially true is because you grab George Kittle. When you get that early tight end, that makes it difficult to also take early quarterback because that's two of your first five picks that are not that that are the onesie positions. And expect the fifth and the sixth round to be chock full of wide receivers this year. It was and it was a tantalizing prospect to have potentially the number one running back, the number one quarterback the number one tight end or, or close to it. Yeah. And so that can be very tempting. Yeah, I get it. Uh, but the gamble, in my opinion, didn't pay off. And so I'm, I'm back here in the sixth round. My team right now, McCaffrey and Edmonds at running back, Kittle, Jefferson, Kyler. Uh, I am going to take a player I considered to take over Chase Edmonds. Uh, the running back that I have ranked, I think I'm ranked a little bit higher than Edmonds. I like the stack. But I'll take Raheem Mostert here. Uh, they're going to run 500 times. You know what a Kyle Shanahan offense does. And because I have Edmonds on my roster, like if Mostert goes down, if I deal with injuries, if I deal with a little bit of inconsistency, like I feel like I have a very powerful and explosive stack at running back. I got to turn the page here, and uh, I certainly can't go Debo, a player I like late in the rounds. That is too much. You don't want to have the super San Francisco stack? No, that's just too much for me. And then Cortland Sutton went off the board. Um, I could look at, you know, pairing Jefferson with a player like Jerry Judy uh, in that offense. My my Drew Locke trust is is not there. DJ Chark is on the board. ADP wise, that's the next pick. I'm not going to go there either. I don't believe in DJ Chark. Yeah, you hate DJ Chark. That and is honest, correct. and that's if correct. I if I could be honest, your hatred for DJ Chark has taken him off my board. Like I I don't consider DJ Chark because of how confident you are. In anti DJ Chark, I'm just along for the ride. Like genuinely, I tr I trust your take on that. I I have not sniffed the potential of taking DJ Chark. Like he's completely undraftable to me, and and that's on you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so so be right. 
I am going to I'm going to add uh, a second wide receiver here, a perfect complement to Justin Jefferson, a player that will have uh, a tremendous amount of targets, and was discussed yesterday. Oh, you're so smart! I'm going to take Robbie Anderson in the seventh <laughs> round, and so uh, that's my pick here. I think he's a stabilizing force target wise on this team. Um, I have explosive uh, players. I have McCaffrey and Kittle and Murray. Uh, Anderson provides a f- kind of a stabilizing 10 targets a game. Yeah, with your top end talent, if you can get Robert Woods in the seventh, do it. All right, Rodgers went next. James Robinson, Melvin Gordon, DJ Chark, Mike, the fantasy hitman back on the clock. And we can uh, probably have to speed up these picks a little bit so we don't you got it. pass out. <laughs> So we don't have a Megalo show. Uh, so, uh, Will Fuller is interesting to me here in the in, in the middle of the seventh round. Now, unfortunately for the the composition of my team, at least I mean, this is one week only, so you you don't have to you know change your entire draft strategy for one week. But as of now, Javante Williams will be my flex play in week one because Will Fuller is suspended for the Miami Dolphins. So that kind of forces your hand of, uh, I don't love that. And then there's another wide receiver who, uh, I we all like him. He's a man. I'm going to take Debo Samuel. Oh, that makes me happy. I, I prefer Brandon Ayuk like Jason does, but that makes Jason, sense. Jason drafted him. And Debo Samuel could be, look, he could be a discount Brandon Ayuk. So, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I like that. When when I took my last pick and I went wide receiver on the bench versus the running back, the reason was because the running back I would have taken uh, back then is uh, – there's there's a mix of these running backs. I, I probably would have gone Raheem Mostert, but I was between Mostert and David Johnson. I think they're both fine. David Johnson is on a bad team, but he's going to catch the ball. He's going to be the starter. Um, so I, I'm fine with – grabbing the better wide receivers earlier, David Johnson and my quarterback five, Tom Brady, which I get everywhere. Um, that kind of fills out my roster now, giving me a second running back. And oh, like I feel like you lucked out big time. Oh, I was. David Johnson is the last of the tier yes. available at running back here, and I was shocked he was still on the board. I think you, I think you hit a home run there with David Johnson. Yeah, I, 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 when you were on the clock, I was hoping – a whole round ahead that those two players would get to me, and they did. Devonta Smith went next, then Judy, Sermon, Samuel, and sadly for Mike, Will Fuller. Yeah. All right, Mike, what are you doing with your seventh pick of the eighth round? So my team is uh, – I'm pretty balanced here. I mean, very balanced. If, if I want to look at the running back position, m- maybe take a shot on Michael Carr to be in something. Take the chance that James Conner actually is the Kenyon Drake role uh, or A.J. Dillon from – the Green Bay Packers uh, getting more involved, and then of course the the upside of should Aaron Jones miss some time, AJ Dillon is going to be an absolute monster. Over at the wide receiver position, we're in a tier that is not my favorite. Uh, I mean, Tyler Boyd is okay here. Uh, I think you're you're definitely getting safe volume with him for the Cincinnati Bengals. We discussed Brandon Cooks yesterday. Oh, man, I do not like this particular spot. Are you well, looking ask, at quarterback at all? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, so that, that, that I flipped over to the tab while, while you guys were saying it. Uh, I don't like the players at the other positions, or I should say I don't love them. So why not take a player I do love? I'm just going to get it done. In the yep. eighth round, I'm going to take Ryan Tannehill. Uh, although, oh, I forgot Andy already had his quarterback. So a little bit of regrets not double checking the draft board there, but it's all right. I I like Ryan Tannehill to be a top ten option this year, so I'm I'm okay with the pick. Zach Moss, Noah Fant, Kenyon Drake, Tyler Boyd. I am doubling up on some wide receiver depth here. Uh, double up. Uh, I already have Rob, uh, Robbie uh. from the last round, but I uh, I'm gonna go with Brandon Cooks here, and I'm gonna go with Antonio Brown here. So Ooh, oh yeah. come on, yeah, you took Antonio. Yeah, it was my next. Man, it was all lined up. I mean, you should have checked the board and seen yeah. he had a quarterback taking Antonio and then uh, You're right. That's grabbed Tannehill on the way back. However, team Nin- five right round. before you just took a second quarterback. Ninth round, A.B. Uh, so Anderson, Cooks, and Brown in the seventh, eighth, and ninth round. I really like that at, at wide receiver to go with Jefferson. Are your regrets gone of Kyler? They, they're, dis- they're, they're starting to fade a little bit okay. uh, just because 
I feel like those are the last oh. two players of the wide receiver position the in that tier. The ebbs and flows of the draft. Yeah, follow along. <laughs> Carter, Logan Thomas, Waddle, Stafford, Mike on the clock. All right, so he, he came back. I'm, I'm drafting this guy everywhere. I'm taking A.J. Dillon, those giant meaty thighs. Yeah. Can't keep Mike away from something. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I am on the clock now. Um, my running back depth is poor. Yeah, I've got Austin Eckler and David Johnson. I love the fact that I've got <laughs> Kelsey and Brady and a great group of wide receivers, but my running back depth is bad, and I don't love the running backs that are on the board here. If I was to take a running back here, it would either be Devin Singletary oh. or Naeem Hines, two guys I don't really love or believe in. Um, if I wanted to build more depth at wide receiver, I'm looking at another year two breakout option in Michael Pittman. Um, you could go with, uh, you know, Henry Ruggs. Uh, my Hollywood is still there. So, look, the, the reality is I'm not in love with any of those guys at any of these positions. That's the point where I'll take a weak running back. So I am going to grab Devin Singletary here. I think that is a backfield that's nebulous. He is a good running back, and it's on a great him, offense. You took him over Jamal Williams, yes. which I think is interesting. I would rather have the Bills nebulous situation or than, Hines, the, though. than the Detroit Lions. Okay, And Hines is just someone I, I have a really hard time believing in if it's not full PPR, and, and this is half PPR. Um, so I'm going to go that way, and I'm going to grab uh, just because I know Mike loves this guy, and I'm – I love grabbing year two wide receivers. I'm going to take Michael Pittman. Oh, come on. Michael Pittman gone to Mr. Moore, Tanyan Burrow, Hollywood, Corey Davis, Mike Williams, and Mike is back on the clock. Can't, right. can't draft A.J. Dillon again here. Uh, are you sure? And if you search, I don't know if you can search sleeper for quads. If you just search quads, it'll Does he sort, show up? sort by the, the, the largest. But All right, at the wide receiver position, Interesting players of note to me, uh, Devontae Parker. Jason already highlighted uh, Henry Ruggs. Marvin Jones here from the Jacksonville Jaguars is at least interesting. I mean, and it, which is good because if you're in the double digit rounds, interesting is your peak. Yes, give me at least interesting before I draft somebody. The the camp reports, at least that I'm seeing. I don't know if you guys have are 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 seeing anything to the contrary, but just talking about Jacksonville, but. Marvin Jones, everyone loves LaVisca Chenault. Don't have a problem with that. But, hey, but Marvin Jones is getting talked about a lot as being a, a leader of this wide receiver bunch. I believe that. And Chenault went with the 11th pick of the ninth round. He was somebody I jotted down as a late round uh, flyer, hoping he'd make it back to me. But where are you going to go here? Uh, and then at running back, Tony, you could just start going with those insurance running backs, go with the, the anti-fragile approach of Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison, see if they inherit a role. And you know what? I am. I'm going to take Tony Pollard here with the – There's I, I have Zeke, so now I have that insurance built in. There's the possibility that Pollard gets used more than uh, – uh, whispers that he'll be used more this particular year. I'm particularly disappointed in the fact that Darnell Mooney, Mooney, Mooney went with uh, the pick right before me here. Uh, disappointing. I thought he'd be able to grab him. I want – you know, your double-digit rounds, like you said, we still have to take a defense. There's three positional picks left. I want some shots at somebody that could come out in week one and surprise. That's kind of my goal at this point because I want to know if I have established value or not. I want to know early. And there are a couple of players in that category that are still available to me. One of them I will take. It's Henry Ruggs. I mean, What's what's kind of comedic and it, let it's, me cross that name <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like this is a pretty good offense. They were a top ten type scoring offense, and yet this is this is the first non Waller pass catcher off the board for them, right? I mean Henry Ruggs. Yes, you're going to take the shot in the first round pick, having a, a year or two breakout like you know like Pittman, like Judy, um, like Ayuk or Lamb. I'm going to take the shot really late on Henry Ruggs. Uh, which means I've gone four wide receivers in a row. And then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, durability, weekly touches with Jamal Williams here in Detroit. Okay. I don't love it, you know what I mean? But 11th round should yeah, be involved. I, I They're still you. maintaining the hot hand approach there in Detroit. So Gallup, Parker, Hines, 
Edel Smith, and Mike, you have your third to last pick. All right, so Marvin Jones did make it back to me. I am looking between Marvin Jones and Nelson Aguilar, uh, Aguilar wide receiver for the New England Patriots, presumed uh, number one wide receiver for the Patriots. Jason, you were just talking to a reporter uh, out of the Boston area. Did mm -hmm. they have any updates on the wide receiver battle? Uh, it, before it, that would help me influence this. Pick yeah, here. Nelson Aguilar is the guy. Nelson Aguilar over been, Jacoby Myers. Yes, over Jacoby Myers. Nelson Aguilar has been uh, showing out as looked great. And, they paid him a lot. Yeah, they paid him a lot. So that he's a guy that um, I assume you're about. That's to all me, I needed to hear, Jason. Let me cross that name off my list. <laughs> okay. You're back um, on the clock. You went Singletary Pittman with your last two picks. Was really hoping to have Latavius Murray here. Um, I think he's a good super late round. If, you, yeah. if you're weak at running back, he can plug in in a pinch. Unfortunately, he went two picks earlier. There's no other running backs that I really want to take a shot at. I'm not going to stack Philip Lindsay with David Johnson or go for old man Tevin Coleman. So I'm just going to take the players I want to take. Um, that's going to be Elijah Moore. I'm going to take the shot at maybe that week one breakout surprise. Rookie wide receiver for the New York Jets. Rookie wide receiver for the uh, New York Jets. And so that I don't end up with the very – because I'm on the turn. I don't want to end up with the very last defense. I'm actually going to take my defense first here with my second to last pick. Grab the Los Angeles Rams. Good, because I saw a name on the bottom of your list, and he was going to be my last pick. No, here. that's my last pick. That you cheated. Not. You looked at my list. I did. He was going to be my pick. You <laughs> are a liar and a scamp. I am taking <laughs> – What is it, scamp? What is a scam? I presume it's very negative. The is way that, that like that a he's... scab? Uh, <laughs> I, a, I've heard a it. A scamp is a person, especially a child, who is mischievous. A scamp uh -oh. in a scally Oh, way. no. Oh, no. What? You are a scamp. It's a person, especially a child, who is mischievous in a likable or amusing way. Oh, oh. Uh, that's right. It's a lovable scamp. The, the old, old scamp. The old scamp. But anyways, back to the pick. Uh, <laughs> Dang it. That was my last pick for sure. I took Trey Lance. A uh, quarterback, rookie quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. It's – I don't know if, if if you will be able to take Trey Lance here by the time real drafts are happening, but this – the fire is being stoked regularly uh, out of San Francisco, out of camp. It could still be Jimmy Garoppolo. That's why you're able to get Trey Lance in the 12th round. Uh, if, as my last positional pick, but I'll take the upside because if he starts week one oh boy. with that rushing ability. You'll really regret that Tannehill pick at that point. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm take gonna, your last defense, Mike. I'm going to close out my draft here with, of course, the 12th round A.J. Green pick, uh, the number two wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and then the Pittsburgh Steelers as my defense Mike, uh, you can wrap this thing up here. I'm trying to pull up the week one schedule real quick, real quick, because uh, I haven't been paying attention. Uh, yeah, you've been too busy podcasting. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, my bad. Uh, I'll take the Patriots against the Dolphins. I'll All right, be I'll bet against Tua for week one. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, Jason, you do have a final positional player to, to select. Yes, and I did find someone worth at least taking that week one flyer shot. Miles Sanders can't catch the ball. They did draft a great running back this year, and Kenny Gainwell. Uh, we'll see if he's more involved than than, than Boston expected. Scott. Oh yeah, Boston Scott. I I I doubt he makes the roster. All right, really? I think they drafted yeah, Kenny Gainwell to replace going. Boston Scott. We'll see. Uh, so to wrap things up, my team at running back: McCaffrey, Edmonds, Mostert, Jamal Williams. Uh, I have Kittle at tight end, Murray at quarterback, and my wideouts are Justin Jefferson, Robbie Anderson, Brandon Cooks, Antonio Brown, Henry Ruggs, and of course AJ. Green. Mike, your squad. I got Zeke, Gibson, Javante Williams, A.J. Dillon, and then my insurance back, Tony Pollard. That rounds up my running backs at wide receiver. D.J. Moore, Tyler Lockett, Debo Samuel, and Nelson Aguilar. If I have a, a deficit, it is definitely there. But I have Darren Waller as my starting tight end, which sort of makes up for the wide receivers. And then Ryan Tannehill and the, the hopeful pick of Trey Lance at my quarterback. I have Tom Brady at quarterback and Travis Kelsey at tight end. My wide receivers are Allen Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Deontay Johnson, Ayuk Michael Pittman, and Elijah Moore. At running back, which is my weak spot, I've got Austin Eckler, David Johnson, Devin Singletary, and Kenny Gainwell. One thing I've noticed from your mocks and, and your recent draft, I think, from last night, is that you have been, I think, consistently hitting 
powerhouse wide receivers maybe every time. And in consecutively in many drafts where you you end up having a run of three or four or five superstar wide receivers as the backbone of these teams. I really like starting running back, running back so that I can focus on that. This this yeah. draft I went running back tight end and still focused on that. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. There's a Christian, Christian McCaffrey signed jersey up there right now for $23. It ends on Tuesday night. A Metcalf jersey up there for 35 That auction ends on Tuesday night. These are all uh, authentic autograph memorabilia from Pristine Auction. Use our code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what draft people liked. Uh, some different starting spots. You know, 1, 6, and 12 in this mock draft. Ice and Fire show tomorrow. Oh, brother. One of my favorite episodes of the year. Can't wait. These episodes, they just don't stop. They just keep coming out. Can't each stop, won't stop. All right. Yeah, it's got a great drop, too. Can't wait. All right. That's right. Excited for it. Ice and fire tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, supporting the show. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.